You guys remember Ralph Reed, right? He was the executive director of the Christian Coalition in the 90s. He's a political consultant and a lobbyist now. He closes the gap between the traditional Republican Party and the evangelical voting bloc. Well, he had some interesting things to say recently at a prayer call hosted by the Intercessors for America group the other night. It's an ultra-right-wing, ultra-Christian nationalist organization. He said, quote, Literally, the survival of our nation and our rights as Americans and as Christians is on the line with these two races on January 5th in Georgia. Jesus Christ, it's insufferable to watch a majority privileged group talk about how persecuted they are. According to rightwingwatch.org, he said unless something happened to reverse the certification of votes in the presidential election, we're looking at the possibility and the prospect of a vice president Kamala Harris being able to break the tie and turn control of the U.S. Senate over to Chuck Schumer, AOC, the squad, and the far left. Even though Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and other members of the squad serve in the House of representatives, not the Senate. And we don't have any far-left members of Congress, sadly. Though I don't personally identify as far-left, I'm more center-left, I'd love to see a little more balance in Congress. We have QAnon nutbags in there right now, and they won't stop screaming about communism. We haven't been further from communism in the U.S. since the Cold War and the Red Scare in the 80s. But facts are irrelevant to people like this. They live in an alternate reality. According to the Friendly Atheist website, a West Virginia teacher hosted a school dance by calling it a religious vow renewal event. It's a story about West Virginia, and since I live there currently, naturally, I have to cover it. Why is this a problem? Because of separation of church and state. Jesus Christ, am I glad that rule exists. Obviously, it's being completely ignored in many cases, but imagine what the U.S. would look like if the rule of separation of church and state didn't exist. Anyways, apparently, this wasn't an official school function. The school has been careful about social distancing and all that. So this teacher went off on their own to hold an unofficial homecoming type of dance with no masks or social distancing. That would be bad enough, but that's not where it ends. According to the news report, the event had about 60 people in attendance. There was at least one person at the event who was COVID positive, and the event was marketed as a religious vow renewal. Who would have thought the people screaming about a book that teaches you should love your neighbor would be the ones planning and taking part in super spreader events? Well, me, I guess. They claim to follow the Bible's teachings, but at this point, they've become the antithesis of what they claim to stand for. Kat Kerr is making her way around YouTube again. You remember her, right? The chick who says she hangs out with God on a regular basis, who says there's a body part requisition warehouse in heaven. When people pray for a new limb, God has an angel at the warehouse package it up and gift wrap it for them, and then it magically appears on their body. The chick who says Jesus loves weddings because they remind him of heaven, where people are constantly, perpetually dancing. I know some Christians who would beg to differ on that point. Personally, I heard dancing is a vertical expression of a horizontal desire. Any Anyways, she's back on YouTube spouting nonsense again. She says, quote, When I woke up yesterday, God was laughing. I mean, I heard him laughing loudly. And he said, I'm laughing because what they've said the electoral college vote came to. Of course, it went to the other side. And God said, none of that matters. It's not changing my plan. This is what God said. I don't care who calls Biden president. He will never be president. I won't allow darkness to sit in this country or control this country. America is my gift that I called forth to be a blessing to this world, and I will have righteousness, justice, liberty, and freedom for all in that country. And he said the others who don't want it will not have a great future. Maybe not a future at all. End quote. Well, that's interesting. First of all, I think God would be the last person to say he wants liberty for people, not the God of the Bible. Maybe she's talking about Satan or something. Satan seems to be a fan of freedom and liberty. And aside from that, I think I'm starting to see through her plan now. As time goes on, it gets clearer and clearer that Trump has absolutely no hope of overturning anything. My guess is she's setting herself up to have a backdoor escape from her own stupidity. She said God told her he will never be president no matter who calls him that. I'm guessing she's going for the amorphous idea that even if he becomes president, he won't really be the president of evangelicals. Like how some people said Trump isn't my president, even if he's the president. Not that it matters if she's wrong. She never pays a social cost. People keep listening to her anyways. 
Jerry Falwell's back in the news. For those who might not remember, he got fired from Liberty University a while back, the school his dad created. He was the president, but then some less than flattering information came out about his personal life. Now look, I'm not one to kink shame, but when he sets the rules to be one thing, and he lives a life completely contrary to those rules, I'm gonna have a problem with it. Apparently he and his wife were doing some stuff with previous students that were frowned upon, to say the least. Plus he was drinking alcohol, something strictly forbidden by the school's policies and moral values. Well, after Falwell got fired, he filed a defamation lawsuit against Liberty U. We all assumed it was just for show, especially since we had physical evidence in the form of pictures and his own Instagram posts proving that he was drinking and doing some questionable activities with his wife and other people. But I guess any questions we had about his legitimacy can be put to rest now that he dropped the defamation lawsuit. In the original claim, he said that Liberty University needlessly injured and damaged his reputation through a series of statements published in print and spoken in large public forums and streamed online following his forced resignation from the university. When dropping the suit, Falwell said, I've decided to take time out for my litigation against Liberty University, but I'll continue to keep all options on the table for an appropriate resolution to the matter. It was a waste of time and just for show anyways. But hey, if he wants to pay the court system a ton of money to frivolously try to repair a reputation that he damaged by doing what he did in the first place, then far be it for me to try to stop him. According to Hemant Mehta on the Friendly Atheist blog, Pastor Greg Farrington from Destiny Church in Rockland, California, knows exactly why churches are closed in 2020. COVID? No. It's because Satan is trying to persecute Christians. Once again, watching a majority privileged group cry about persecution is the cringiest shit ever. Pastor Farrington said, quote, here are some of the current trends in the church world today. 30 to 40% of the people who attended church before COVID will never return to church. 20% of all churches in America will never open their doors again. And 70% of pastors are looking for another place of employment. You know why? It isn't because of a virus. There is a demonic strategy to silence the church. This virus came from China where they silenced the church. And now the silence of a church in America is because there is a demonic force behind it. The reality of this moment is the demonic strategy is working. That means 31 million people will never come back to church. That means 80,000 churches will shut their doors and never meet again in that building. That means 420,000 pastors are looking for new jobs. And you're telling me this was a virus? You're telling me this is not a demonic strategy? It's all a demonic strategy, every single part of it. And the political leveraging to shut the doors of the church in America by liberal crazies that see us all as non-essential. I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. He's an absolute liar. End quote. I just want to point out that I have no reference for those statistics, so I'm going to assume they're fabricated right off the top of his head until some evidence is presented. They tend to do that kind of thing. But the crazy doesn't end there. He's in the news again. His church suffered an outbreak, and in response he said, quote, I'm blessed. The favor of God is on this house. I don't care what the haters say. God has put a jacket on me, and I am blessed. Not sure what that means exactly, but it's certainly a strange way to react to the fact that you were responsible for people getting a virus during a worldwide pandemic. These people are delusional. They don't live in the same reality as us, and the gap between the right and the left gets wider.